Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to Level Up 2023. Uh, my name is Ryan Engel, and I'm the Associate Project Manager at uh, Colzer. And I'll talk a little bit more about our company here in a minute. But what we're going to be looking at today are the secrets to building the perfect dashboard. Now, perfect, don't hold me too much to that word, but uh, I do want to share a lot of tips and tricks on best practices for making a dashboard, especially when it comes to reporting to project stakeholders, managers, or executives. Uh, I do see a lot of things in the community on YouTube um, that, that look really great and dashboards are very, very detailed, but often I'm, I am missing um, you know, sort of those best practices or, or dashboards tailored for that stakeholder audience, again, especially when it comes to project management. So we'll dive in and hopefully you take away some uh, some real good uh, key points and some tips and tricks. So let's get started here. So quick boring stuff about me out of the way real quick. Um, just wanna add some context uh, to, to my background just to give you some some ideas on how we got started with ClickUp. You know, I've actually started in the IT field and I was in the, that field for eight years before I transitioned to project management. And so in IT, you know, we got started with ClickUp because we needed that solution for uh, tasks, resources, inventory, as you might imagine. And you know, when I transitioned to project management, obviously taking ClickUp with us was a no-brainer. And really in our region of the company, since we're, we are a global company, uh, we have never had proper project management. So we've had the advantage of having ClickUp with us from the beginning. And that's really influenced how we were able to build our policies and build the way we do work and we report. And so it's been great having ClickUp at the foundation of, of all that. So of course, dashboards and reporting are a big part of that. So regarding Colzer, regarding our company, we are a leading dental product manufacturing company. We have a, a long history. And again, we're a global company. And uh, we do put a lot of emphasis on working the same way and collaborating, which is great. Of course, ClickUp's a natural fit for that. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, the North American region has never had a proper project management office. So um, we, we didn't really even take away the, the software, the practices that the other regions are using. We, we really truly did use ClickUp from the beginning to form our own way of doing things. And so that you'll see that that really has influenced the way we, uh, we do project management. So how we're using ClickUp other than project management. So we're using it in the, the key areas you would expect for, for PM, um, anywhere from our tasks to, of course, collaboration and documents, but reporting and sharing a huge, huge part of project management. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. But I did wanna share how we're using it for other uh, departments and teams as well. You know, creating those purpose-built tools, um, a list, a folder, different views that are tailored specifically for a team and what they're trying to accomplish. Uh, ClickUp is great for that. It's very flexible. So all the custom fields, all the views you can think of, um, you know, it's really been tailored to that specific purpose, that specific goal for our teams. Um, so it's been a great, great tool for that. And you know why, why it's time to level up your dashboarding skills, you know, pun intended, um, is because really, you know, of course we're at level up and we're here to share knowledge with each other and be more productive. But also I think what's important is, you know, we're in a work, we're in kind of in a work environment where, um, an, an economy as well, where, you know, it's important to make sure that we are demonstrating what's being done, uh, kind of what value we're presenting. Um, but also it's it's because again what i mentioned is in the community and some demonstrations i've seen before there's a lot of really great clever detailed dashboards out there um, but but i haven't really seen a lot that really do focus on you know simplicity but more i would say intentionality where a dashboard is purpose built for the audience it focuses on you know automating the work and making sure that the it's simple enough for really anybody to pick up and you know, grasp the information that you're trying to convey. So that's really going to be our focus today in sharing those best practices. And, and really the specific focus here is going to be that bird's eye view dashboard, right? Um, so making sure that you, when you share this or when you present it, you know, the, the, the stakeholder or the audience is going to be able to determine what you're trying to share from a more of a 30,000 point uh, or 30,000 foot view. So, you know, it's not necessarily every granular detail, but they can take a look at your widgets and layout and they can say, okay, I know where we're at along a project. You know, I know those key details and then they can move on and, uh, you know, follow up later. 
And really those key principles we're going to be looking at, you know, I, I've mentioned it a couple of times now, understanding the audience, understanding the, the stakeholders. This is really first and foremost, because it's going to determine which widgets and information you display on the dashboard. It's also going to influence how you share and, and present the, the dashboard as well. Um, we, we talk about sharing a dashboard versus presenting. Well, if you're sharing it to somebody in ClickUp, whether they're a veteran or a, you know, a newbie, they will have access to that dashboard. So they're, they're going to be on their own whenever they want to check it. So it needs to be clear and concise. They need to know what you're trying to show them. They need to be able to understand it and move on versus you presenting it where maybe you could have a little bit more detail on there. Um, because you're walking them through it. So again, that's that's really going to influence what you're putting on the dashboard. You know, we say typically less is more in a lot of areas, and this is definitely true for dashboards. Dashboards are very powerful and flexible, have a lot of widget options, a lot of calculations. But again, when you understand the audience and when you have a specific message you're trying to convey through a dashboard, you know, I think a lot of people throw some widgets at the wall and see what works. And, and again, that's fine, but they end up having way too much information just because you can, right? Dashboards are fun. They are, they are great to play with, but again, be intentional and be focused with the dashboard. This, this next tip, this next principle is, is simple, but when we talk about favoriting the dashboard, this is going to be, uh, you, it's going to be a big help for you uh, maintaining that dashboard and that information. We're going to talk here in a moment about crafting the dashboard so that there's not a lot of manual work involved but you still may have to tweak it from time to time throughout the weeks and months, you know, again, depending on your audience and your stakeholders. So everybody knows the favoriting system in ClickUp, you're favoriting your lists and docs, um, but definitely do that with dashboards, you know, start, hit that star, make sure you can access it quickly so you can tweak it. So by time that presentation comes or by time your, your stakeholder wants to get, give it a look, there is no additional work that needs to be done. It's just ready to go. They can take a look at it. And again, that ties in with that that final point, and that's use the set it and forget it widgets. And thankfully, most of what you can do in a dashboard is tailored to be that way. So it's tailored to bring in your live data from a list or folders or even a space and just pull in the status information, pull in tasks, of course. But there are, of course, options where you can have a text box, for instance, and you can type things in some bullet points. And that's that's okay. And I think that's especially okay if you're sharing it and presenting it to yourself to walk them through those details. But if you are sharing it so that they can access it anytime, you know, that information is probably going to quickly become out of date or just not make sense for that particular scenario. So making sure that you're putting an emphasis on the widgets that just update themselves, do that refresh. Of course, we have automatic refresh. That's going to be one of the most important factors when you're uh, creating your dashboard. So with that said, let's dig into a couple of dashboards that I have set up and I'll give you a couple of examples. So first dashboard I want to share with you is aptly named Detailed Busy Dash, right? So this is an example of a dashboard that is actually, I'd say pretty well set up. And it's an example of something that I would use myself maybe in, in project management. And this shows you some key bits of information like what we have in progress, even sort of what our status statuses look like in sort of a pie chart. What do we have left and what have we completed versus you know what's still going on so pretty nice uh, right in the middle we have projects represented uh, by folder and we see the um, you know current progress kind of what's overdue so pretty nice there you know as we scroll down a bit you can tell there's there's more area to scroll so we'll keep scrolling we have what's coming up in a future projects list and then here's maybe our first you know not not mistake, but maybe uh, not necessarily the best practice, again, depending on your intention. And that is a lot of text going on. So not only instantly do your eyes look at this and say it's really busy, but again, this is stuff that, you know, you do have to come in here and mess with and update and get rid of and sort out, maybe change the date if that's what you're doing. So, you know, depending on how you're sharing that and somebody checks on that at any given day, they're going to say, why am I looking at notes from a week ago? And then we keep scrolling. You'll see clearly there's there's more opportunity to scroll. This is kind of our second point that we ideally want to avoid, and that's having so many widgets that we do have to keep scrolling, right? So whether you think it's important or uh, or not, it's it's something that is there. So somebody's naturally going to keep scrolling to look at it, and if it is important, somebody's not going to see that kind of at first glance. So 
right away they're, they're drawn to everything here at the top. They can look at that information and maybe they're new to ClickUp and they don't even realize you can scroll in a dashboard. So that's something that, um, again, if you can avoid it, uh, don't have so many widgets where it's going to have a sort of an endless scroll. Because as, as I keep scrolling, you also notice now I have the end and that is our budget uh, widgets. We have a couple calculations here. And I don't know about you, but a lot of management that I present to is uh, uh, thinks budget is pretty important. So if that is something that's important to your stakeholders, you know, why would you have that at the very bottom, right? That's it sounds like an obvious thing, but again, people get carried away with the the design and kind of what they would want to see, and so they're not necessarily putting the emphasis on the audience here. So again, not a bad dashboard. There's a lot of detail here, but it is quite busy. And, uh, and you do have to scroll a bit to get to some, some not only additional information, but the important bits. So if we take a look at another dashboard that we call simplified priorities dash, you'll see that it has a, a pretty similar layout. We've got uh, maybe a bigger widget that shows the tasks in progress, the tasks remaining. And by the way, notice that we're naming the widgets. We're, we're not just leaving the default titles, um, but we're naming the widgets clearly so that anybody can understand what we're trying to show here. We've got those budget widgets still here, but they're nicely at the top, right under the tasks here. Um, we still have those active projects that really hasn't changed. And we still have the future projects list too, just maybe a little bit more simplified. Um, and then what we have done is we've replaced the text widget with chat. We've actually even called out what we want people to use it for too, which is important. So the chat is nice because this encourages kind of asynchronous work and sort of those, the non-meeting where you don't have to set aside 30 minutes. Um, somebody could access this dashboard, take a look at the information. They could even dig into the information if they want to, of course, uh, to add some more uh, context. But if they have any follow-up questions or comments, just leave it in the chat so people can be notified. So it's not a text note that somebody needs to go take a look at manually. Um, it's a real live dynamic chat. So, and notice that you can so you can see that I do need to scroll more, but we've we've hit the bottom, right? So everything that is in view is is what we're going to see, even if we do have to scroll a bit. And that's it. It's a nice, simplified uh, way to take a look at the most important information. We can ask some follow-up questions and we can move on with our day. So great to keep the dashboard nice and simplified and, uh, and nice and tailored, again, for your specific audience. Make sure that you know who you're presenting to, what kind of information they want to see, and you will be all set for all of your dashboards going forward. So with that said, let's take a look at our key takeaways for our slides here. So key takeaways, uh, again, keep those top most important widgets simple, keep them prominently displayed, make sure that they're named appropriately so that it conveys exactly what you want to show. Because again, ClickUp does allow you to dig into the information on the widgets if you do want to see that additional detail. So you can avoid, second key takeaway, avoid too many widgets uh, that need to be manually updated because you have those dynamic widgets that are pulling in the live information. They can click and see additional detail if they want to. They're not having to read a text box um, for the key points you're trying to convey, the bullet points, what have you. Um, everything is live and dynamic. Everything is refreshing automatically. And then lastly, the most important point, really, tailor the dashboard for the audience. Um, and, and really, this could be you, right? Um, make sure you have all the widgets and information that you want to use, you want to use in a meeting or, or convey to your team. But make sure that most importantly, if you know you're going to be presenting something to the president of your company, well, ask that, ask him or her, you know, what types of information do you want to see? What's the most important information for you to look at? you know, in a, in a single page for two minutes and get the, the gist of your project status. So very, very important. Please understand the audience. And, and really this, this point I make in the, in the third takeaway, duplicate the dashboard if necessary, start with your personal complex dashboard and uh, duplicate it, rename it. Um, and then share that to the right people, take away the widgets that don't make sense or that are too much detail. And then that way you're, you're not necessarily starting from scratch. So, so make it easier on yourself. So with that said, uh, I want to thank everybody for, for, uh, listening to me here. Hopefully you took some, some value away from uh, the presentation. Uh, I, I always love dashboards again, from the project management standpoint, and I hope to see your dashboard out there, uh, you know, in the community. So again, thank you for listening. Uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn or, or even learn more about Colzer from our website. Uh, otherwise, please enjoy the rest of Level Up 2023. I will see you there.